truth that guys, I hope you've learned, learned a lesson through what we've been through. Yes, yes sir. sir. You know, it's really everything good that ever happens in life is about people. Yes, sir. People. It's that simple. It's people. And it's really loving each other, giving it up for each other. Yes, sir. And there's nothing more powerful that you'll ever experience in your life than each other. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you learned that today. Now, here's a gig. Give you a little. We're going to do Sunday. Can have that bye week coming up, right? Yes, sir. So, Sunday, regular schedule. We're not walking through. Okay. 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 You're out. Okay. Monday, you're off. Okay. Yeah. Wednesday, we're going to practice. We're on and off. Yes, we're going to get ended up, healed up, because we're getting ready to go on the run. Yes. I can't tell you how proud I am and how happy I am for you. You deserve everything that good that happens to you in your life. You deserve it. You are awesome people. Hey, what you got, baby? That's what I'm saying. Hey, game by Coach Watson. Indeed, it is with a very big smile that we welcome you to the Coach Sean Watson Show. I'm Jim Noble, brought to you by Yokohama and Budweiser of Spartanburg. I, I tell you, man, let's get to the good stuff. 31 to 16, the win over the Citadel. Of course, it breaks a very long losing streak. You all know about that. And we saw your face as the team listened to your words, Coach, and presented you with a game ball. What did you see looking back at you? How much joy was in that locker room? Um, I saw, you know, joy. The kids were, you know, they were happy because of all the hard work they had put in to get to that point. And, um, you know, they really believed in us. They believed in, you know, what were our message and, you know, our support for them. Mm -hmm. And it's really, you know, as I told them at the end, you know, everything good that happens to you in life happens because of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just a lot of good you know, people with their like hearty coming together, and it came out great for us. Well, it was a spectacular afternoon at Gibbs Stadium. We will break down the win over the Citadel. We'll look ahead and see what's next for the Terriers over the final stretch of this season after the bye week upcoming. And we'll learn a little more about this guy. It is indeed the Coach Sean Watson Show. What makes this guy tick? It's all coming up next. You can always count on the crisp, refreshing taste of Bud Light. Just like you can always count on Always Game Gary. Yay! No bar is too far. No wing sauce is too hot. Not for Gary. Gary is the man. He's nothing like Keith. Keith never wants to do anything. Why are we even talking about Keith? Always Game Gary is famous among friends. He deserves a Bud Light. Enjoy responsibly Bud Light Beer, AB St. Louis, Missouri. Welcome back, everybody. Again, it was a fantastic afternoon. It was a great atmosphere at Gibbs Stadium. It was Hall of Fame weekend. Let's talk about the beginning of the game. Your defense goes three and out, gets right off the field, and the offense starts slinging it around on that first drive. By design? By design. We, we had talked... Uh you know, my, my experience I had at Georgia was awesome because I got into the analytics of football at another level because that was really my job. And, um, you know, it was, uh, you know, you take the first drive and you score and you win in the middle eight, uh, your opportunity to win games goes up by stats <laughs> a lot. You know, so we wanted to be aggressive coming out. Defensively, we got the ball back. We were able to take it and put it in the first drive. And it also really... It could have played out better for us because it ignited the belief. Sounds like a winning formula to me. Let's check out the highlights. Wofford and the Citadel. Quarterback, Wallace in motion. Derek hands it straight up and nothing doing. Derek to throw for the first time. It's over the middle, up in the air, and it's going to be incomplete. First and 10 Terriers from their own 33. Nathan Walker is the running back. Jimmy Wyrick is back to pass. Got plenty of time. He's going to go long, and it's going to be complete. K.O. comes back for it. Wyrick will hand it off to Walker, who's got room off the right side, turning the corner, breaking tackle. On this drive. Wyrick, a quick out, complete to Parker. Can he make a man miss? He stretches. 
The jetty in motion. He'll get it on the jet sweep. Can he turn the corner? He can. 10-5. Touchdown, Terriers. Dylan DeJetty, the freshman. Graduate, playing quarterback for the Citadel. Blitz comes and he'll get there in the form of David Powers. Eric is back to throw. Rolling out. And that's going to be complete. A great catch. Wyrick is back to pass. Here comes the blitz. Jimmy gets rid of it over the middle, and that is going to be complete. That ball fake did not fool anybody. It certainly didn't fool Sean Boyle. First down handoff to Parsons. Up the middle, the freshman, 30, 25. Oh, couldn't keep his feet. Owen Springer, the snapper. It's up. It's got the leg. And that is good. Here's the pitch on second down. Wofford strings it out nicely, and they will stack it up for no gain. Back to passes Green. He is running for his life. Flag down. The ball slips out. It's a loose ball. Wofford has it. First down. Quickly back to pass. Looking into the corner, and he's got him. Touchdown, Devin Matthews. Second and three. Green back to throw. Right sideline, broke it up. Walker gets it. Up the middle, got some movement, hurdles his way. Wyrick going deep, wide open, KO, touchdown, Terriers! R.J. K.O., that's his first college touchdown, and it comes with six seconds to go in the half. They're trying to see if they can get some wins here in the second half of the season. Wyrick back to pass on first and 20. Going long, deep, looking for Parker. He's got him. Landon Parker, touchdown Terriers. 56 yards from Jimmy Wyrick. Derek on the keeper. Did he get there? I don't think he did. Yeah, it's a great win. I just, uh, you know, I love the kids. They're just, they're awesome. They, they, we just got arm to arm and found our way through and through it. Can't say enough about them. You know, all the credit goes to them and a wonderful staff, great people. Oh, you can feel the joy in that locker room. 31 to 16, the final Wofford over the Citadel. Coach, you crank out 349 total yards, 232 passing. Great quarterback Jimmy Wyrick in the offense for us. Uh, Jimmy did a really nice job. I think, you know, at halftime he was 10 to 14. He was over 200 yards. And, you know, that's, um, you know, again, a lot of that was, um, you know, he did an excellent job making decisions. Our receivers did a great job of presenting the route picture, and they were spot on. And our guys up front, including our backs, mm -hmm. were involved in the protection aspect to give him the time too. So it was, uh, I thought he did a really nice job. Even, you know, we had to manage some things on third down and he made some good decisions burning the ball, getting mm -hmm. rid of it, not taking a sack. He took one and they got, we got, got fixed. So he really did a nice job overall of managing a complete game. Overall, I'm sure there are always things you want to clean up after mm -hmm. a game. Uh, there were some penalties on the offensive right. side. The defense gave up a, a, a lot of yardage at the end, but most of it was when the game was pretty much mm -hmm. out of hand. So as you take all that whole ball of wax and move forward, uh, a lot of teachable moments there perhaps? Yeah, really good teachable moments. You know, one of the things, that, you know, the procedure penalties, mm -hmm. we haven't had that problem. We've got to clean that up. And that's sort of easy cleanup. Uh, you know, I think there was a lot, you know, of excitement and anxiety, on, you know, guys wanting to, you know, play. Mm -hmm. And we just need to calm down and, you know, just get focused on our cadence, not on the defense's move call. Because we had some of that stuff going on. And then, you know, I think uh, overall what was awesome about yesterday is, you know, what the kids saw what they needed to do. And that's, you know, we want to finish games. And, you know, and, you know, speaking from a defensive standpoint, not give up the yards that we did towards the end and then offensively be able to continue to move it. Now, of course, you got a bye week. The kids are going to get some time off. Does the bye week come at a good time for you 
when they get back, hopefully refreshed a little bit, you could build on everything that you did on Saturday? We can, and we'll get some guys off the shelf. You know, we'll get, uh, you know, I think Jalen will be back for sure. Uh, Jai will be back for sure. So Ryan Ingram has a chance to be back. So we've got some guys that will be able to roll off the shelf. That's good. And then we'll have a chance, because anytime you play an option team, it's a physical game on defense. Mm -hmm. And you'll know, we'll have a chance to mend up. And, you know, moving forward, what I've done with the staff is challenge them offensively and defensively without, you know, we're not putting a new offense or a new defense. What can we add to us to, you know, to enhance our guys, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, it's always good to kind of soak in a win before we get to a bye week rather than stew about a loss. So now the Terriers have a couple of weeks before they get ready for ETSU. When we come back, we'll learn a little bit more about Sean Watson and look forward a bit to ETSU. It's all next here on The Sean Watson Show. Black and gold. Bold. A victory story about to be told. Grit, toughness, and tenacity. A hub of hard work in Hub City. We're on these wins like dogs on a bone. In the zone, our place in your face won't leave you alone. Strength, speed, fire, true. I'm sorry, do these things trouble you? We're Wofford College. We fly the W. Ingles, proud partner of the Wofford Terriers. It doesn't matter if you're active on the road or in the gym. Your body is your strongest tool. Spartanburg Regional Sports Medicine Institute is here to push you to the next level. With partnerships across Spartanburg County Schools, we're here when it happens. We diagnose, treat, and heal at the Sports Medicine Institute to get you back and active, in the gym, in the game, and to the next level. We never quit because you never quit. Think big. Something life-changing. I'm talking education. Let's get inventive. Blow things up in a good way. Do it for 20 years? Wake up and education has received billions in funding. Who does all this? If you've ever played one of these or these, that would be you. Yeah, thank you. Welcome back to the Coach Sean Watson Show, brought to you by Budweiser of Spartanburg. I'm Jim Noble. So, the rhetorical question, who is Sean Watson? Well, a safety in college at Southern Illinois. We won't bring in the, the, the graduation dates because then we'd have to bring in mine and we're both going to sound old. But how does a college safety migrate to offense once your coaching career got going and then found out that, hey, I'm, I'm pretty good at this? Well, it's, it really started with my college coach, uh, Ray Dempsey, Coach Dempsey, uh, uh, always told me, you know, because the reason, my, reason you play is because you know what the offense is doing. I kind of conceptually got it. Mm -hmm. And whenever, um, whenever I uh, became, when I started actually working for him, he put me on that side of the ball to teach me that side of the ball, thinking that I was going to end up on the defense side of the ball. And I fell in love with it because it was probably more natural for me. And, um, you know, that's how it all started, really. You've got some, some big, big programs on your resume. You've studied under some storied head coaches. I could go down the list in Colorado, Texas, Nebraska, Louisville, Pitt, Georgia. Who are some of your biggest influences mm. in turning out what you turned out to be in terms of the coaching style? Uh, I'd start with, uh, you know, Ray Dempsey, Jim Caldwell. Uh, coach Caldwell was my position coach. Had a big impact on my life, just as an example in the classroom and you know, what he did for me as a person. And then, you know, Ray Dempsey, my college coach, my high school coach, Mike Deck, I could, he was like a dad. And, um, you know, then in my career, it's been, you know, uh, guys like uh, Gary Barnett, I can't say enough about him. He's, he's the, probably the biggest, uh, you know, total head coach you know, influence on me. Mm -hmm. He's a great motivator, a great program builder. Um, you know, Randy Walker was much the same, just a little different. Uh, great friend and just uh, loved every second with him. Uh, you know, I, I really, probably the biggest influence though in my life was uh, Weeb Eubanks. Wow. You know, Coach Eubanks was my, unbeknownst to me, was my next door neighbor. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he geez. lived uh, across the pasture, three houses down. Now, Randy had asked me, I was coaching for Randy at the time, he'd asked me to, 
you know, basically get a legend speaker, and I was looking for a legend speaker. Shimmy Schimbeckler, Bo's son, was my manager. I was trying to get Coach Schimbeckler. He couldn't because he just went into uh, pro baseball at that time. Mm -hmm. So busy. So I'm looking. My neighbor says, yeah, there's a coach that lives down the, down the road here. You may have heard of me, Coach Joe <laughs> Namath, <laughs> yeah, among like, others. Yeah. What a Super Bowl. <laughs> so that very day after he told me that, I walked across the pasture with three houses down on the right, and there's Coach Eubanks and knocked on the door. He spoke at our clinic, and, you know, my mom and dad just— my my mom and dad always taught me to reach out and always respect my elders and really, you know, uh, draw on their knowledge. So I asked Coach, so would you mentor me? Because I was just moving to, to quarterback. Okay. I'd been a tight end coach, wide receiver coach, offensive tackle coach. And he spent for five years, three of the five years, he was with me almost every day. Uh, that we were working and Randy always had him around the office and he was a major influence I mean he'd sit in a classroom with me the whole nine yards and I who I am as a teacher is him You know, he he was a great day-to-day -day mentor in the classroom on the field uh, Just taught me so much. Um, I can't you know, I, I mean I owe everything to him to be honest That is a fantastic story and you, you look at you know, all the those big names that you 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 kind of tutored under over the years. And now you're Wofford, and mm -hmm. FCS football is a little bit different animal than mm -hmm. Power Five football. Um, a lot of people wonder in the, in the changing landscape of college football, Sean, with uh, you know transfers being a bigger deal, and mm -hmm. NIL and all that stuff. Can a school Wofford size be successful at the FCS level? What do, what do you think, what have you gleaned in your fairly short time here? Uh, you know, I, absolutely. I think, um, you know, what, what makes Wofford unique is it's like uh, Northwestern was in my career. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a school that has uh, an academic reputation that is, you know, is, is a, a, the calling card. And, you know, it's a school of excellence. And I, you know, I love my experience at Northwestern because of the kids I was coaching. They got the big life picture and they came to football and it was football was fun. And because football was fun for them, it became fun for me. <laughs> you know, so it wasn't, uh, and I, I really think what the, you know, so I think the landscape at Wofford is just uniquely different. I think we, you know, Wofford can be the, it can be the Stanford and the Northwestern of FCS football. Mm -hmm. That's just my humble opinion. And um, because of, you know, what it stands for. And uh, this, you know, the next thing I, I would say to you is I think FCS football is the last bastion of the, the game that I once remembered, because uh, you know the BCS stuff has gotten it gotten so crazy, you know, with uh, NIL and all the things, the uh, layers we're adding to it, super conferences. You can't keep up with it. Right. And I think the kids that are here, you know, uh, at at the FCS level, truly love the game of football, and it's fun to go to the building every day with them because they love the work. Before we let you go, very well said, by the way. You got ETSU coming up in a couple of weeks. You got plenty of time to game plan for these guys, so I'll, I'll kind of concentrate more about, about Whopper. What sort of football team do you expect to come back after uh, the little break they have? Uh, ready to play with a renewed enthusiasm? Yeah, there's a great vibe in the building. And I think, you know, we have to continue as coaches, continue to grow at them and, you know, continue to stretch ourselves. What we're going to use this week for is we're going to work on us. Uh, we will introduce uh, Eastern uh, Tennessee, uh, I should say East Tennessee. Uh, we'll introduce them and then, uh, you know, get ready, uh, have a preparation period for them. But we're really going to work on us. And when we come back, then we'll pour everything into them. The staff, we're going to game plan them this week. So we'll get a week ahead with a game to come. And uh, we're going to use this week to really get, you know, get back to us and, you know, uh, you know, to grow us. I think that's really important where we're at right now. I think I speak for all Terrier fans right now. Cannot wait for October 29th, 1.30 p.m. Gibbs Stadium. Hopefully it's another great day both on and off the field. And we can't thank you enough for your time. Congratulations thank on you. the win. We'll see you next time. Thank you. And thanks to all of you for joining us once again on the Coach Sean Watson Show, brought to you by Budweiser Spartanburg. And we will see you next time.